right now on ESPN Plus, you can find brand new Mel and McShay with a three round mock draft where they play the role of general manager for all 32 teams and take turns making the picks. And we'll run through this for you a bit here. Mel was up first. He for Jacksonville took Trevor Lawrence. Todd took Zach Wilson. No surprises. That's when it gets interesting with the third pick. Mel took Justin Fields for the 49ers. Again, this is based on what they would do. There was one projected trade in this. Kuyper made it with uh, himself moving the Patriots from 15 to 7 in a trade with the Lions to take Mac Jones. Mel also went quarterback at number 9, giving Trey Lance to the Broncos, believing he has a higher ceiling than Drew Locke. So that would be where the quarterbacks would go, again, as far as this mock exercise that Mel and McShay put together. And this is what the top 10 winds up looking like the way it went. You see a Cincinnati in there taking the offensive tackle for Burrow. But all eyes, of course, are on the quarterbacks. And you see where they would go as far as this is concerned. And there's New England moving up to seven in a previous mock draft. Uh, Mel Kuyper had New England moving up to 10. So the questions are rich about the Patriots and quarterbacks. So Orlovsky, I'm just going to start with the most basic question I can. What exactly, in your opinion, do the Patriots need to do about quarterback in the next two weeks? Even the playing field within their division. Their division's got Josh Allen, Tua Tonga Vailoa, and likely Zach Wilson. That's just in their division. Forget the conference that has Patrick Mahomes and Justin Herbert and Lamar Jackson and Trevor Lawrence, right? And so I think that they've been un, uh, abnormally aggressive in free agency, and I expect them to try to be abnormally aggressive in the draft. Now, the question for me, because it's a great unknown with New England, is one, are they going to take a quarterback? And then two, what style of quarterback is it going to be? Because there is the reality that we have Justin Fields and, and Trey Lance in a certain style of quarterback grouping where those players are going to do more with above the X's and O's. Those guys are going to take a play call, and if it's not there, they have the talent and potential to do more with that play, to win that type of rep, where Mac Jones is going to consistently – execute that play call at a relatively high level, right? And so do the Patriots and Josh McDaniels want to go back to what they did for 20 years or so with Tom Brady, which is running that offense and just having a guy just be dialed in with his execution on a consistent basis, not give you much more than that? Or do they want to do with a little bit what they flirted with with Cam Newton last year, with the athleticism being able to do more with just the X's and O play call? At the end of the day, I think Josh McDaniels has a huge decision for New England. All right, so Yates, let me come to you on this question. If Justin Fields does go three, which is what they projected there, it is not what is widely expected. But if that were to leave Mac Jones and Trey Lance on the board, if you are no. Bill Belichick, which one are you going up to get? I'm turning up for Trey Lance. I just see a significantly higher ceiling for this player. And Dan's correct that Mac Jones fits the confines of what the Patriots have had under center for 20 of the past 21 years. Obviously, last year being the exception. But you have to look at the direction in which the NFL is evolving right now. You had eight quarterbacks rush for over 400 yards last season. The Patriots, within their own division, saw Josh Allen make major strides last year. And yes, he's a gifted thrower. But where he can really torture you is on second reaction plays. Even if his initial read is not there, or if there is pressure in the pocket, Josh Allen might run towards the sideline like he's getting ready to run out of bounds. And the next thing you know, launch a football 24 yards down the field to Stephon Diggs. The game is changing. Trey Lance offers you ability to keep up with how the game is changing. So, Mike T., uh, you know Belichick well, and, and again, we're, we're projecting him to do something here that he has literally never done before. Would you explain that and then explain what you expect him to do? Sure. In the five years that he ran the Cleveland Brown drafts and the 20-plus years in New England, he's never taken a quarterback in the first round. He's taken one in the second round, Jimmy Garoppolo. But when you start the offseason as aggressively as they have, spending all that money, it's impossible for me to think that they're not going to complete the deal and not go up and get a quarterback. And I understand what Field and Dan just said, but I think we're overcomplicating it. Yeah. And maybe because I was on the losing end of so many of those games for 20 years. But if it was good for 20 years, go get Mac Jones. He's incredibly accurate. He's smart. He's the closest to Tom Brady. Go run it back with Mac Jones for a long time. Yeah. That, that has been... One of the things we projected for quite some... Go ahead, Danny. Real quick final thought. Go. Yeah, I just think it's important for us not to lose sight of this. Quarterbacking in the NFL always has been and always will be about who do you have to throw the football to, when should you throw the football to them, and where does the football need to get throw precise, thrown precisely. 
at the end of the day, that will always win out at the quarterback spot. And right now, Mac Jones does that, the best out of that group of three. Trey Lance, Justin Fields, and Mac Jones. Mac Jones does that the best out of that group. Let's see if that's the decision that Belichick winds up making. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.